What if the most crucial piece of NATO's air defense isn't a stealth fighter, but a single engine? The Gripen, often overshadowed, holds a secret weapon at its core, a Rolls-Royce powerhouse. Discover how this engineering marvel grants the Gripen unparalleled agility and why it's a game changer for the Alliance. Forget everything you thought you knew about modern fighter jets. The Gripen's engine, a silent but deadly marvel from Rolls-Royce, isn't just about thrust, it's about strategic dominance. This isn't just an engine, it's the hidden advantage keeping NATO one step ahead in any aerial combat scenario. Prepare to have your perception of fighter jet engines redefined. The Gripen's secret weapon isn't its sleek design, but the Rolls-Royce engineering within. Dive deep into how this unique power plant delivers an operational edge that makes the Gripen a vital, understated force within the NATO alliance. When people look at the Gripen, they see the sleek Scandinavian airframe. But that's not where the real story begins. Because behind that elegant design hides a secret force, an unsung hero. The one element that silently transforms the Gripen from a budget fighter into one of NATO's most unpredictable assets. For years, analysts have praised the Gripen for being nimble, cheaper to operate, and surprisingly versatile. They call it the Smart Fighter, the pilot's aircraft, even the cold weather Fox. But very few talk about what actually makes all this possible. And here's the twist. It's not the aerodynamics. It's not the electronics. It's not even the Swedish software that everyone keeps hyping. The real brain, the real muscle, the real reason the Gripen behaves like a fighter twice its size is its engine. An engine so overlooked, so underestimated, that even NATO rarely discusses it openly. And yet, it is the core advantage that defines the Gripen's agility, flexibility, and survival power. In fact, and this is where things get interesting, the engine doesn't just power the aircraft, it shapes the entire strategy behind the Gripen's battlefield behavior. And today, we're finally pulling that secret out of the shadows. Before the Gripen ever took flight, its engine already had a battlefield resume most fighters could only dream of. The F-404, originally built for the F-A-18 Hornet, wasn't just another power plant. It was a workhorse, a combat-tested, carrier-grade engine designed to survive saltwater, violent maneuvers, brutal acceleration, and constant operational abuse. In other words, it was born in chaos, and that made it the perfect foundation for what Sweden needed. But here's where the story gets interesting. Saab didn't simply grab the F-404 and bolt it onto the Gripen. Swedish engineers, together with Volvo Aero, now GKN Aerospace under Rolls-Royce, tore the engine apart, reshaped it, strengthened it, and rebuilt it into something far more specialized, the RM-12. And those upgrades weren't cosmetic, they were strategic. They boosted thrust for faster climbouts. They redesigned the fan to survive bird strikes, a major threat in Nordic terrain. They simplified maintenance so technicians in remote road bases could service it in minutes, not hours. They improved reliability to the point where NATO analysts quietly admit Gripen's engine failures are almost statistically irrelevant. This wasn't just an upgrade, this was a transformation, turning a proven American design into a tailor-made Scandinavian engine optimized for short runways, icy conditions, low costs, and rapid dispersal operations. In short, the RM-12 isn't just the heart of the Gripen. It's a custom-built survival tool, engineered for a style of warfare no other fighter truly replicates. In modern warfare, survival isn't just about stealth or speed. It's about staying airborne when your enemy is trying to wipe out every runway you've ever used. 
and this is where the RM12 engine quietly becomes one of NATO's most underrated asymmetric advantages. Because unlike most Western fighters that rely on massive, vulnerable superbases, the Gripen doesn't need luxury infrastructure. Thanks to the RM-12's quick spool-up time and its unusually strong thrust-to-weight ratio for such a compact design, the aircraft can launch from roads, damaged runways, frozen surfaces, improvised fields, anywhere that gives it 500 meters to sprint. This agility is not aerodynamic luck. It is engine-driven. It's the RM-12 that provides fast throttle response needed for short, high-risk launches, stable, predictable thrust even in cold, harsh environments, rapid acceleration that lets Gripens disperse before enemy missiles arrive. In a peer conflict, the kind NATO now openly prepares for, this means everything, because major air bases will be the first targets. Jets that rely on them could be grounded within hours. But a fighter that can hide, refuel, rearm, and relaunch from dozens of scattered microbases, that's a nightmare for any adversary. And the engine's simplicity is more than convenience. It's a strategic weapon. The RM-12's rugged reliability allows Sweden and any NATO user to push higher sortie rates with lower maintenance hours and smaller logistics teams. That directly translates to lower costs and greater operational endurance, the exact qualities NATO needs if a prolonged high-intensity conflict ever breaks out. In short, other fighters demand support. Gripen, powered by the RM-12, demands only opportunity. And that makes the engine not just a component, but a quiet, calculating force multiplier for the entire alliance. The RM-12 isn't impressive just because it pushes the Gripen forward. Its real brilliance lies in how intelligently it thinks while doing it. Hidden deep inside is a level of engineering finesse that pilots often describe as silent confidence, powered by one innovation above all, FADAC. This full authority digital engine control isn't just a computerized throttle. It is a digital brain that constantly monitors engine health, adjusts airflow and fuel mix in milliseconds, protects the pilot by preventing compressor stalls, squeezes out maximum performance without risking structural stress. In a dogfight or a low-altitude escape maneuver, that kind of automated stability is priceless, and it gives grip and pilots the freedom to push harder without worrying about the engine biting back. But what makes the RM-12 truly wartime ready is its modular design. Swedish engineers built it so frontline crews could rip out major components, replace them, or adjust configurations right next to a forest road, often in less than an hour. No hangars, no special equipment, no massive maintenance teams. That's not convenience, that's strategy because when your operational doctrine is built around dispersal, mobility, and unpredictability, every minute of maintenance saved equals another sortie in the air, another mission completed, another edge over the enemy. And then there's the fuel efficiency. In an era when fighter jets burn through budgets as fast as they burn fuel, the RM-12 stands out. It stretches Gripen's range, extends loiter time during air policing missions, and gives commanders something every Air Force desperately wants, more time on station for the same cost. Less fuel burned, more sky controlled, more missions sustained. This is where the RM-12 stops being just an engine and becomes part of a strategic philosophy a machine built for endurance, autonomy, and practical combat value, not just raw power. If there's one thing modern warfare has proven, it's this. The age of chasing raw power is over. The future belongs to systems that can adapt faster than they break. And the RM-12's architecture is already pointing NATO in that direction because beneath its rugged exterior lies something far more forward-looking, an engine built to evolve. 
its modular core and digital control systems were designed with enough flexibility to integrate upgraded compressors, stronger turbines, new materials, and even next-gen FATIC algorithms. In other words, Gripen's engine isn't a fixed piece of hardware. It's an open framework ready for continuous upgrades. And this adaptability changes everything. Instead of designing fighters that require billion-dollar overhauls every decade, the RM-12 shows how a smart engine can keep a platform relevant simply by evolving from the inside out. It's a quiet rejection of the traditional bigger is better philosophy and the birth of a new one. Operational flexibility is the real currency of air superiority. Because in a world where satellites track every movement, where hypersonic missiles target air bases, where cyber attacks can shut down entire command networks, the jet that survives is the one that launches from anywhere, refuels anywhere, hides anywhere, and keeps flying regardless of the environment collapsing around it. And that requires an engine built not for dominance in perfect conditions, but for survival in imperfect ones. So the real question is this, is NATO looking at the blueprint of its future? A fighter powered by a resilient, modular, easily maintainable engine? Not the loudest, not the strongest, but the most adaptable? Because if resilience and adaptability become the new definition of air superiority, then the RM-12 isn't just Sweden's secret weapon. It's a quiet warning to the world that the next era of air power may be engine-centric, not airframe-centric. And the Gripen, modest, underestimated, endlessly adaptable, might be the first fighter built for that future.